Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a nice homemade exponential equation. We've done a similar problem before. I think it was from Romania. So this is of the same style or the same flavor. We have three to the power X plus one over X minus five plus three to the power three X minus nine over X minus five equals 10 thirds. And we're gonna be solving for X values. Before we get into the actual solution, I'm gonna be doing something different that I haven't done before. I'll show you a systematic way to approach these kinds of problems. But before that, let's go ahead and take a look at how we can break down 10 thirds, because that is going to be critical. So 10 thirds is basically three plus one third. And that is significant because three is three to the first power and one third is three to the power negative one. So when you set that equal to a sum of powers of three, you kind of get like two sums. One of them is variables and the other one is a constant. In order for these to be equal for cer certain x values, do you think we need to do one-to-one -one correspondence or can we have something else? So in other words, this is what I'm trying to say. Looking at this, I'm kind of thinking maybe x plus one over x minus five equals one and kind of like comparing them this way and three x minus nine over x minus five is equal to negative one. And then from here, we are supposed to get the same x value, right? So can we use this? Or if you switch these around, you can go ahead and switch them around and then look at the other case because looking at this equation, they're supposed to match up like that, right? I mean, does it have to be one of these cases? Think about it. Or, or as an alternative, can we relate, can we relate x plus one over x minus five and three x minus nine over x minus five? Let me explain what that means. Like, what is that supposed to mean? Can we relate these things? Okay, here's what we're gonna do. For example, these are the exponents, right? X plus one over X minus five and three X minus nine over X minus five. In other words, if I add these exponents, can I get a constant from here? Is there some, a constant? Well, let's go ahead and add them. We get four X minus eight divided by X minus five. Unfortunately, this does not turn into a rational number. That was my hope. I wanted to get a rational number from here so that if uh, the sum of the exponents is a constant, then uh, one of them can be expressed in terms of the other. But unfortunately, this approach did not work, at least for this case, right? So let's go ahead and do this problem more systematically. I think this will be helpful in many ways. First of all, we're gonna be dealing with polynomials, how to compare polynomials, and now we're gonna be looking at a system of equations, kind of like a diophantine system. So this problem actually, even though it's an algebra problem, contains some number theory, okay? Very light number theory though, so don't be scared. So let's see how we can approach it. My, my goal is the following. I wanna take x plus one over x minus five and three x minus nine over x minus five. And then I wanna multiply each one of these by some integers or rationals so that this sum can be written as a constant, which is a multiple of x minus five over x minus five. What is that supposed to mean? Well, if x does not equal five, and we do know it's, it can't be five, then on the right hand side, we get a constant C. But why did I write it as x minus five over x minus five? What's the significant? Because I'm about to make a common denominator and compare the numerator. So this is what it's gonna look like. A times x plus one plus B times three x minus nine equals c times x minus five. And you can totally forget about the denominators, no need to write them because they're all the same. Make sense? Cool. And since x does not equal five, we're allowed to multiply everything by x minus five. So let's go ahead and see what this entails. Distribute, you're gonna get a system of equations from here, even though it looks like an individual equation. This is what is really powerful about polynomials, their powers, right? They have powers. So a x plus a plus three b x minus nine b equals c x minus five c. 
So let's go ahead and put the x terms together. Uh, we can kind of take out a plus 3b, that's the coefficient of x, plus a minus 9b. Notice that I want to compare uh, each side or right hand side and the left hand side and they're both polynomials and they're supposed to equal each other for all values of x. Of course if x equals 5 is the excluded but don't worry about it. For everything else these two sides have to be equal. And what does that mean? That means that the coefficient of x needs to be the same and the constant term needs to be the same on both sides. So from here we can safely say that a plus 3b is equal to c, which is the coefficient of x, and the constant term is supposed to be negative 5c. Now here's what's really nice about it, and that's why number theory is beautiful. Now that's probably why Gauss called it the queen of mathematics, I think. Is that Gauss, right? I believe so. Anyways, so let's go ahead and write this as a system. a plus 3b is equal to c, and then a minus 9b is equal to negative 5c. Now, we have three variables, a, b, c, but I'm hoping that they can turn out to be rationals or integers, right? But we have two equations. That's what's beautiful about number theory and Diophantine equations and systems. And I made a video about Diophantine systems before. You can go out and check it out. But it allows us to solve for integer solutions and sometimes rational. So how do we do that? In this case, elimination would work well, so let's go ahead and multiply the second equation by negative 1 and add these two equations. A cancels out, which is nice, because that's something you can do. And from here we get 12b equals 6c. Simplify it and you're going to get c equals 2b. Or not 2b, yeah. This wasn't intentional, it just came out to be. Now c equals 2b, but I also need a in terms of b, maybe, right? How do I get that? Well, use the first equation a plus 3b is equal to c, which is the same as 2b. From here, we can basically subtract 3b and write the a as negative b. Awesome. So we got a parametric solution because there are three variables. This sh shows that there are infinitely many solutions, but we don't care. All we need is a single solution, and obviously I want to go with the simplest case. Okay, what's the simplest case? taking b equals 1, <laughs> obviously. If b is 1, c is 2, and a is negative 1, let's go ahead and plug those into this equation. All right, that's what we're going to do next. But I want to write this first, because it has a positive coefficient, so, and that's a b. So 3x minus 9 over x minus 5 minus, remember, a was negative 1, x plus 1 over x minus 5, remember, it's right there, equals c, which is 2, times x minus 5 over x minus 5. But again, you don't need to worry about it because what's going to happen is if you do the subtraction, you're going to realize, uh-oh, 3x minus x is 2x, negative 9 minus 1 is negative 10, and this is actually 2 times x minus 5 divided by x minus 5, so this is equal to 2. And this is your c value. You see that? Everything checks out. Beautiful. What is that supposed to mean, though? Here's the thing. If you call this y, and don't ask why, you can use any variable, then this is going to become, because this is a 2, this is going to become y plus 2, and if you plug it in to the original, you're going to get something beautiful. That's how these problems are made, and you can make one of these as well, but here we can go ahead and call this 3 to the y, and this will become 3 to the power y plus 2 equals 10 thirds. Now we can take out 3 to the y, just like solving a basic um, exponential equation. 1 plus 3 squared is 10, cancel them out, leaving us with 1. 3 to the y is 3 to the power of negative 1, which means y is equal to negative 1. So it was one of those cases. And what did we call y? x plus 1 over x minus 5. By, by the way, let me tell you something. This expression cannot be 1 because there will be no solutions. You see, you could have told. Or you could tell. Anyways, from here, x plus 1 equals negative x plus 5. 2x equals 4. x equals 2. That should be the only solution. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.